more and more these days, you are probably uh, being asked to edit footage that has been shot with a phone. And as you try and work with that footage in EDIUS, you may have found that yourself running up against certain challenges, maybe even finding that uh, some of the footage that you bring in crashes the uh, system as you try and work with it. So I thought it'd be good to do a tutorial. I've recently had to do that myself, uh, getting material in from various sources, various types of phones uh, that produce different levels of quality. And some are okay. You know, you get some, some footage from the latest iPhones that's actually pretty good quality and you can work with it fairly well. But some of the earlier versions and some of the cheaper phones do produce uh, types of video that may cause problems. So I wanted to show you my workflow that I've developed as uh, we work with this. Um, I recently had a colleague return from South Sudan and she handed over some footage uh, to go along with an interview I did with her when she got back. Uh, as well as some still shots. And we were able to put together a fairly little decent report. Maybe I'll post that report so you can see what uh, we were actually able to do with some of that uh, material, that media. Now, what you're likely to find is that uh, the person who gives you uh, media that was shot on a phone, very often the phone was uh, oriented in the vertical position, as you see here. In my case, uh, the uh, colleague did actually record some video that was horizontal and uh, other times she uh, just left it in a vertical position. Let's bring in some of this footage and take a little sample of both types. Bring that in. Now you'll notice that uh, even though in the, uh, the Explorer window here the movies that were shot vertically uh, are represented in a vertical position. When you actually bring those in and try to play them in EDIUS, that they automatically turn to the horizontal position. And it's not something that you could really put in a timeline. And so we're going to need to uh, work with that a little bit before we can actually insert it into the timeline. Uh, here, here we go. She was able to... Uh, have some of her footage uh, in, a, in a horizontal position, but other footage was uh, shot in this uh, vertical position, and when you bring it into EDIUS, it looks like that. And uh, here we go with an interview. Again, that's not something that we could work with. We're going to have to do something to that before we can pop it into a timeline. Let's maybe take this as our example, pop it down in the timeline. So how do we work with this? The first thing that I would want to do is check the properties of the footage itself and see what it was shot at. So what we're looking at here is probably a footage from an iPhone. It's progressive. It's at 29.97 and uh, for the most part is in pretty decent shape. Now just so you understand the background of what's happening when you bring a piece of media into uh, EDIUS and drop it on the timeline, EDIUS is going to go ahead and conform that media to the settings that you have uh, set up when you started your project. And uh, if you've watched some of our earlier tutorials, you'll know that we recommend that it's probably best to make your project settings match the majority of the footage that you're going to be working with in the project. And in this particular project, most of the footage was interlaced NTSC footage. And uh, so when we bring in this footage and drop it onto the timeline in this project, EDIUS is going to automatically conform whatever format this video was shot in to our project settings, which is interlaced NTSC video. So in order to avoid any type of ghosting problems that might show up uh, as a result of this video being conformed on the timeline, what we might want to do first of all is right click on the uh, clip itself and go to Time Effect, go down to Field Options, and select Use Nearest Neighbor. And that will get rid of any ghosting problems, especially those clips that have more motion. Now the second thing that we're going to want to do is uh, rotate this video so that our uh, interviewee is upright. And so again, we'll right-click on our clip and go to Layouter. And uh, here we can uh, slide this down and rotate the video 90 degrees.
Now you notice that our, our clip now goes off screen. We have to kind of uh, move this around. That's because it is a, a high definition video, 1920 by 1080. And so when we rotate it, the 1920 pixels trying to fit in a 1080 window. So depending on how the video was framed, to get a nice pleasing portion of the clip that uh, you want to use in your timeline, you may want to resize that video. You can do that by just grabbing any one of these corners here and with your mouse button held down, just drag that in. You can also make these size adjustments with uh, our stretch tool here. If you just point to this with your mouse and go up or down um, on either one of these, it's going to enlarge or decrease the video. And when you've got something that uh, you're happy with, hit OK. And you could at this point with your layouter tool also position that anywhere on the screen by just moving it across. And that way, you know, you could design a screen that has textual information or other uh, video elements alongside of it. But we'll keep it in the center for this uh, tutorial. And when you've got it uh, looking good, let's hit OK again. Now the next step I would say would be to save this clip uh, to a Grass Valley AVI file. And that way as we continue to work with this clip, we'll be working with it in a uh, high quality codec and we'll be able to do more color correction to it. We'll be able to manipulate it in different ways without fear of uh, crashing the computer. I have found that with some of the cheaper phones, if you don't do this step of saving it to an, a Grass Valley AVI file, that when you start uh, playing it or manipulating the video in any way, it can cause some problems. So let's go ahead and save it. Let's do an endpoint and hit F11 and let's use the Grass Valley. I like to have the best quality settings checked online fine. And let's save this one. Okay, that's finished processing. Let's drag it from our bin right over into our timeline. And now we can work with this clip without any fear of uh, causing any problems because it's in a high quality codec that uh, Edius likes. Okay, and at this point uh, we can start doing some color correction. A lot of this footage that you bring in from these phones may not uh, be the best, especially if they were shot out in a hot sunny day in South Sudan. Uh, let's go to our effects palette and there's a couple things that I would probably do with this clip. First of all, let's add some sharpness. It looks pretty fuzzy. And uh, let's maybe pop that up to about oh, 24, 25. I think that helps. And then the other thing I'll do is uh, drop on a YUV curve. And uh, with this lovely tool, we can uh, correct this video a lot, make it look a lot better than what it uh, came natively from the phone. And uh, that looks a lot better. Okay, now we can pop it into our timeline. which I've uh, actually already done. And uh, that makes it look not too bad. I mean, even CNN today uses uh, footage shot by iPhones. And so if you're stuck into a situation where the only footage that you've got to work with is uh, something that somebody shot on an iPhone, go ahead and by all means use it. Now maybe just show you a couple more that she shot with her phone. Here she is out in a remote area shooting through the window and the original footage uh, didn't look very good. And as you can imagine, it was pretty shaky. But using the stabilizer filter that uh, comes with Edius has helped this a lot. Let's just maybe um, click on our shot and go to our information palette and turn the stabilizer off so that we can see what it looked like without that. And you can see it's in pretty bad shape. But by adding the uh, stabilizer, it has uh, really helped the footage quite a bit. And uh, we could maybe even enhance that footage again a little bit more using the YUV curve.
And that looks not too bad. Let's see if there's any other sample to show you here. Yes, here's another uh, clip that was shot uh, in the vertical position and had to be rotated. But we wanted to use it because it does kind of give you a, a feel for being there with the soldiers all around and that type of thing. All right, so that gives you an idea of how you can uh, integrate phone footage into your project and make it look not too bad, even if it was shot uh, in a vertical position. And so for now, I believe that does it on how to work with phone footage in EDIUS 7.